My name is Salvador Mendoza, and I'm going to talk about how to exploit all my stride information with new technology. The idea behind this tag is how to implement audio waves and Bluetooth connections. A little bit about myself. I'm a security researcher. Last year, I present about Samsung Pay tokenized number flaws and issues here in DEF CON. And even today, we're going to use some Samsung Pay tokens just for the demos. What exactly is max try information? Well, any kind of capability to store max try information, they have this iron based magnetic uh, particles that could be changed implementing magnetism. But how we can relate max try information with audio files? To do that, we need to, in this case, in order to transmit max try information into audio, we need to be able to mimic the audio waves from the magnetic field changes when you swipe a card. These kind of waves are the F, 2F signals, and they contain zeros and ones that the card reader can interpret like any kind of character. These characters are, of course, account numbers, names on the cards, all that kind of information that you're going to have in the card. This is how it looks a audio spoof or audio file. We have many different kind of spikes on them. But what that really means, from major malfunction DEF CON 14 more than 10 years ago, he talked about max try madness. In that presentation, he said that depending on the space of the spikes, they are going to be zeros and ones. And these zeros and ones is going to represent the characters. But of course, how we can transmit this kind of information to the card reader? Last year, Weston Hacker present had to brute force hotel keys foils implementing M3 player. But also, he, he present how to send Roma Stride data with M3 player too. So I started researching what kind of technology we need to do that kind of thing. If you try to transmit audio files implementing just the audio by itself, you're not going to get anything in the car reader, or you're going to get some kind of errors. The key in this attack is the amplifier. Sounds kind of funny. You need an amplifier to amplify the signal. So the first demo is how to use Raspberry Pi and the on, on one coil from, this is the cheapest one, $3 from eBay. This has a range for five, 5 volts to 12 volts. Uh, how you can transmit max try information. The setup is very is basic. You connect the audio to the Raspberry output and connect directly to the amplifier. I'm using a external power source to the amplifier, so I don't want to damage my Raspberry Pi. And I'm using a coil from my last Max spoof that I used for my last stack here in DEFCON. I connect a credit card reader directly to my laptop. So basically, when I run a a audio spoof or audio file, I get directly the max try information into my terminal. So you can see in the credit card reader how the lights detect the signal and send directly to the terminal. So after this approach, I was thinking about portability, how we can do some kind of thing like that, but to be used in different kind of things. Um, the main idea was what kind of technology we have that can support audio and could be closed platform. Well, we have Bluetooth technology. I start buying many different kind of speakers, <laughs> try to implement in this kind of attack. And this one specifically has a amplifier built on. So we don't need an external amplifier. So I designed a tool that I call it Blue Spoof. The blue spoof is a tool very, not kind of similar to the Samicam car max spoof because that one implements an ITI 85 microchip and also a motor controller. This one implements a Bluetooth speaker board and implements audio files. And of course a coil. Some of the characteristics of this tool is cheap, Bluetooth support, three point volts vary, portable and accurate. So what about the demo?
So it can be charged directly from five volts, like any kind of charger that you have for your cell phones. So in this presentation, I'm uh, creating a WAV file, implementing a track two form, and the, the max share information I'm using is a Samsung Pay token for my Chase account. Please don't use it. You are going to be able to do it. I hope so. So in this case, I'm creating the Chase Spa Spay WAV file. I'm connecting to the blue spoof like normal a blue Bluetooth a speaker. After I connect it, I'm going to open Audacity so I can I can see the WAV files from the file that I just create. After I open the file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the output of the Audacity to send the data to the blue spoof tool. So you can see the waves in this file, how it looks like. The name of the blue spoof register in my computer is the token. So when I play, play like loop play in this attack, what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm approaching the blue spoof to my credit card reader to get some kind of information. So you can see how I start detecting the signals when I approach this kind of um, tool. So what about another kind of devices? What about a Huawei chip smartphone? I'm talking about $20 smartphone. It's already connected to a blue, blue spoof tool. So I approach this one to the credit card reader. And what happened is it started detecting the signals momentarily. And after that, it started regist registering like another con kind of track. Uh, after this, I'm going to implement a iPhone 6 because all of them have support to a Bluetooth connection. We can implement in all kind of devices. Uh, it's kind of cool how the iPhone sends a mic type signal because almost all of them are detecting the credit card reader. So I'm going to play the same WAV file. Uh, I'm impl implementing a loop to get uh, a better result in the attack. So you can see how it detects the signals the credit card reader. What about the Samsung Galaxies? Well, they work the same. He implementing the blue Bluetooth connection too. And it's almost like uh, the iPhone's result. I can detect almost all the tracks sending by the audio spoof. Well, the question is, how can I implement this kind of attack without downloading any kind of file to my computer or to my device? So designing a project that I call violentmac.com, I was able to create audio spoof from the web browser. So thanks to HD for this idea. The main point here is to create audio files from the, in the web server, and after that, we can create or to play the web files from the web server without the necessity of downloading any kind of file. So let's say I have, uh, I'm using an iPhone 6 in the example. I'm going to play from the web browser, implementing HTML5 support, and you can see in the background how the Mac stripe is detected by the credit card reader. So let's try to make a payment. I mean, that's the main idea of this kind of attack. Let's see if it really works in the real time on the, in the live. So I'm going to make a payment in this kind of terminal. It's already detected the signal very quickly, and I can select the product. After that, it's going to validate it. I'm using a Samsung Pay token. They, they say don't, they don't can use it in any kind of device that Samsung get, devices. But and I got a notification from Samsung that I'm using one of his tokens. Of course, after that, if you are tired of spoofing, you can connect directly to your original speaker and use it like normal. <laughs> so the question is how we can use this kind of tool to attack different targets. Let's say, let's put the scenario of Western Hacker that he was trying to brute force different kind of uh, doors, door locks in the hotels. How we can send data, let's say we have two locks in the, in the hotel and we have two blue spoofs that we can put one in one lock, the other one in the other car reader. So we can send data to both of them simultaneously so we can see which one can open. Uh, in this example, I'm using one of the programs for my laptop called Audio MIDI Setup in my Mac. I'm, I'm going to create a multi-output device. I already have two devices, two blue spoofs connected to my computer. 
So I could add them to this multi-output device. After that, in the output selection and the sound settings, I select the output. So let's see a demo of this one. So in this example, I have two computers with two credit card readers. I have two less spoofs already connected. And I have my laptop that, it's, that it has the same settings that I present today. Uh, I'm going to play an audio spoof file. And you will see in the background how all these two computers detect the, t the signal simultaneously. Yeah, play again. I'm using a Windows in one machine. I'm using Ubuntu in the another one. So I'm playing the audio. And you can see that it detects the tracks in two computers simultaneously. Now the big question is how we can send different data to different blue spoofs. It's kind of challenging. First I tried to use SOTS from terminal to select the output device, but it didn't work in my computer. So I started searching and I used Python sound device library. You are able to connect to multiple devices and you can control them implementing Python. So let's tell you a little bit about the background of Samsung Pay tokens. When you are making a payment in Samsung Pay, you are, uh, if you put the cell phone offline mode, all the tokens, some of the part of the tokens is going to be incremental, but the cryptogram is going to be static. The last part of the, of the token is going to be random numbers, three digits. How we can brute force these three digits? Because I know the, the, to um, the transaction ID is going to be incremental, so the next one, instead of 10, is going to be 11. So let's try to make a brute force attack. So in this example, I'm implementing three different blue spoofs simultaneously. I'm connecting to my computer, your laptop, uh, in this case the Mac, you can connect that up to seven. But in this particular case, I'm connecting three, but yet I'm going to use two of them. I'm going to put them close to the credit card readers, so you can see, oh, I think I got the one I cry in my Windows computer. So I'm going to put close to the credit card readers, and I'm going to play, I'm going to check the output first, the sound device library, to show you the outputs of the sounds, sounds uh, boards. So I have three outputs, but I'm just going to use the IDs three and five for this attack because they are my blue spoof tools. So I'm going to, I'm going to generate a brute force attack. In this case, I'm going to use this token sample that I mentioned. And I'm going to create a, a WAV file from that. So if the token transaction ID is 10 in this one, the next one has to be 11. And the random numbers I'm going to create is from 0 to 20, just on sample. After that, it's going to generate the WAV, the WAV files and it's going to start sending, depending on the idea of the speakers, different kind of max information to one another one. You can see in the background how it's going to detect the signals one and the next one. So if they are different tokens in one terminal and another one, one has to be even numbers and the random, and the next one has to be odd numbers. So after it's running this attack, I'm going to approach the camera so you can see the tokens to show you the even numbers are the difference between one token and the other one. I'm giving like two seconds of sleep just to not be too fast. So you can see in the, in the back part of the talk, and we have threes, ones, fives, sevens. And these ones are four, six, eights, tens, twelves. So they are different tokens for different kind of attacks, or for the brute force attacks. In this part of the base that we're making in the attack, we have the track numbers, frequency, padding, base, maximum bits and the name of the WAV file that I'm implementing. Of course, you can see what kind of speaker we are sending, any kind of token. After it's completed, you can see how you get the last token is going to be 20 because that was my last part of the token, or the last part of the tag.
So uh, this Saturday, I'm going to present demo labs, this tool I call SamiCam, in honor to SamiCam car. It's about max try information and how to implement blue spoof together with this tool. So you're welcome to be there. Uh, thank you to all these guys for all the support. And please, if you have any questions, you're free to ask me.